Hello and welcome to episode 87 of the Roadie Rumble podcast. Today I'm joined by one of the newest URI Rams and may have one of the best college names in, in all of college basketball. That is always right. It's a sophomore guard out of Cartridge, Missouri, a transfer out of Northeast Oklahoma A&M, Neo A&M at the JUCO level. Uh, Ways, appreciate you taking the time. How are you today? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Yeah, for sure. Again, we record this the night after Rody's second victory um, of the season over Fairfield. It's now 2-0 and so far, uh, non-conference play and on the season. Obviously, a lot to be excited about for Archie Miller and company. Still a lot to work on chemistry-wise. Of course, it's a new group. But overall, you know, how are you feeling your first few games at the D1 level and, you know, just what's been the vibe on campus so far? Uh, it's been great, you know, uh, just getting acclimated to the D1 type of style. It's definitely been great. And, uh, you know, the campus lifestyle has been great. You know, student section has been great. So we still need y'all support. So shout out to the uh, ruckus st- section. I yep, believe so. So, yeah, it's been great. The last two games keep needing y'all support. Yeah, for sure. You talk about the ruckus actually leads me into my next question. Um, the team's mm-hmm. got Wagner now on Tuesday. So Rudy fans, the ruckus, they definitely got to come out, show up for that one. Uh, keep packing the Ryan Center for you so far. You know, I know you guys feed off of that that crowd energy, you know, the student section and, you know, just the all um environment all together all around. You know, how does that that play an impact into the game? You know, I know these last two games necessarily weren't, you know, close games at times. I know maybe last night towards the end it was a 13 point game. But what is that crowd energy? You know, how does that, you know, kind of fuel the fire a little bit for you? Uh, it's like adding a bunch of gasoline to the fire, you know. We definitely pick up the vibe from the student section and just the overall fan support that we get. So it's a great boost whenever we make a good play or just like the energy we come out uh, from the gate. You know, the crowd has a lot to do with this. So just keep showing support and we love it. Yeah, that's great, man. It helps that we're winning right now, too. So I can imagine, you know, just all time high right now and just such an adrenaline uh, boost when you're out there on the floor. Can't imagine, too, just like the goosebumps that you may have, you know, during the national anthem when. You know, the crowd's kind of cheering behind you and just, you know, you're ready to, you know, you're you're not on the you're on the bench, but, you know, just kind of getting ready to sub in and just kind of make an impact right away whenever Archie calls on you or calls your number. So um, mm-hmm. pretty impressive and pretty cool, you know, just to see that things are going pretty well right now for the program. Oh, without a doubt. Appreciate it. Yeah, and we're going to ke- continue to keep winning without a doubt. For sure. For sure. I know roadie fans haven't got that in a while, so they're definitely looking forward to seeing that. Um, But I want to circle back, you know, to these last two games. But first, I kind of want to learn a little bit more about you, you know, a little bit about your background, some of your upbringings. Um, You mentioned we mentioned you're from Cartridge, Missouri, uh, and you went to Joplin High School. Uh, You actually played quarterback and you were a two sport athlete, football and basketball, but then eventually decided to just pursue basketball at the next level. You know, what was that process like for you to just go through uh, with basketball? I can imagine, you know, being, you know, talented in two different sports and having to make a decision there, which one you want to play next. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a long process in de- uh, deciding, you know, I had offers for both, but my heart was always with basketball. I always felt like that was my first love in terms of sports. And it was also something I was just better naturally at. So I always felt like basketball was the way to go. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you got a lot of offers, you know, for basketball, but ultimately, you chose to play at Neo a and uh, where you actually ended up averaging 14.7 points, 5.3 rebounds, 6.4 assists, and 1.8 steals per game. Pretty solid averages. Started 29 games, so all games last season. Led the team to a regular season title. You finished with all region for uh, first team honors as well. You know, what was that season like for you? You know, what was it like to play at the JUCO level? And what did that teach you, you know, as a person, just on and off the court? Uh. Just betting on yourself, you know, Juco, it's really a test of uh, your confidence in a way, you know, you have to have a lot of confidence in order to make it out, but you got to be a dog at the same time. You know, Juco always holds a special place in my heart. It was one of the fun years of basketball on and off the court. So it was just a great time at Juco and just a great route to go if you're under recruiting. Yeah, I kind of like that, betting on yourself a little bit. Obviously, you know, you want to eventually make it to the D1 level, but just knowing that you know, you can only control what you can control right now at this level and, and kind of just leaving it out there all on the floor. Uh, real quick, you know, you're you're a dynamic guard, obviously a true scorer, you know, someone that likes to shoot the ball as well. We talk about the assists, um, which is one of my questions down the road, you know, obviously the nine in CCSU. But do you kind of model your game after anyone? Did you grow up watching any NBA guys or just college guys? Do you, you model your game after anyone? 
Uh, I don't think I would model my game after anybody, but I love how Trey Young plays. You know, Trey Young was somebody I've always looked up to. So his passing ability at the point guard position, just being able to shoot and score too, is something I always like to pay attention to whenever he's playing. Yeah, that's interesting. You were right. I can't remember the last time we've had, you know, real good shooters, especially from behind the arc. And, you know, I see just from this year, our shooting totals have been a lot higher, especially from range. So that's pretty cool to see. And I think Trey Young is, is a great comparison. Actually went up against Rhode Island. I think it was 2018 um, in the NCAA tournament when he was at Oklahoma. Um, Fats Russell made some some pretty cool moves on him. But I was actually in high school during that. But, yeah, I, I remember watching that. Um, I was already committed to URI, and uh, it's pretty cool. Every time I hear Trey Young, it just reminds me of that game, and we actually upset Oklahoma. So, was, no, that's dope. dope. But, um, yeah, so, you know, after last season, you enter the transfer portal. Ultimately, you commit to Archie Miller. You're now at the University of Rhode Island. I think it was Coach Cunningham, right? It was your lead contact. Yeah. Um, so what went into that decision, you know, and why you were right? What were those conversations like with Coach Cunningham, just coaching staff? I uh, had a lot of conversations with them, but it ultimately came down to the trust in developing my game, developing my frame, putting some weight on me, which happened over the summer, put, a, uh, put on over 15 pounds. So it was just a trust level that went into it, that it made me feel comfortable with the coaching staff here and my development. And I knew I was going to be on a pretty good path here. Yeah, for sure. It seems like, you know, the recruiting already so far, two wins in, you know, the chemistry is starting to to be built. Um, not just within you, but just with all the players on the floor. It seems like a completely new team, but it really has not phased you guys at all so far. So really cool to see. And it looks like, you know, the hard work that you guys put in as a team over the summer is already starting to pay off. So um, I like that that answer you gave beforehand, a lot more wins to come. So definitely as a roadie fan, I think, you know, roadie fans who might be watching this this podcast or these interviews, um, I think they're definitely excited to see those wins start to come in. And, you know, you guys climb up the ranks in the A-10. So. Pretty cool to see. Without a doubt, we are excited to keep putting on a show for y'all. You know, we play for URI. We play for the name in front of our jersey. So it's going to be a fun ride, without a doubt. For sure, for sure. So talk to me a little bit about Coach Miller. Uh, you mentioned Coach Cunningham, some of the conversations you had with him over the summer and just, you know, sort of your recruitment process. But, you know, what was it like, you know, getting to know Coach Miller? What's he like as a person, as a coach? I know it's still kind of early, but just talk to me a little bit about how that relationship with him has grown over the last couple months. Uh, it's definitely grown, especially when you're carving out a role. You know, he's going to make sure everybody has their role. He's going to make sure he talks to you about anything that you might be confused about in terms of his terminology on the court. You know, me, my job as a point guard is to be the coach out on the floor. So what Coach Archie wants in a way, I got to put it out there on the floor and what he envisions. So having that relationship, having that trust with them, it's definitely growing. So, and he's a pretty fun dude to be around off the court, you know. He's a lot of basketball, but he's a great coach. Great guy, too. He seems like one of those guys. He's all business. He's, he's very serious. I've gotten to know him a little bit over the last year at URI. Um, you know, when he takes the floor, he's he's all locked in on the game. But it seems like off the court, he's got a little bit of a personality to him. And uh, he definitely loves to have fun. And I think his thing is just all about winning. And, and you could definitely tell that. Not even just last year when the program struggled a little bit, but even a little bit more this year. Uh, he's all about winning. And he just wants to do what it takes to to win at the A-10 level. And I mean, there's no better guy to learn from because he's already done it at this level. So with Dayton. That's a doubt. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. I, I definitely i uh, am excited to see how he continues to work with you guys over the course of the season. And, you know, some of the results start to kind of pay off like we were just talking about. Um, but I want to recap now these last two games. Uh, we'll start with the first game. Uh, your first game, you know, at the D1 level, CCSU, you suit up for the first time for the roadie fans. Uh, you put up your first points again at this level, um, but the main thing to take away from that stat line was the nine assists. And I think you were asked about it in the post game presser. But after the game, you're asked about the assists. I think you were pretty surprised. You know, you were just like, I didn't even know I had nine assists. But you couldn't. I think what you said is you couldn't have done it without the team around you. And I think that's pretty cool to see, since you know you guys are are still getting to know each other. A lot of these guys are are just playing their first college basketball games, you know, ever right now. And as chemistry wise you guys are still getting to know each other um it's only been a couple of months so you know just for you to make your URI debut um and then secondly for you to have that much of an impact on that game and of course get the win what was that like for you uh, it was great it was just great being around the guys after the locker room enjoying that first win you know that big win 
I feel like that plays a big part in your guys' identity. You know, how can you guys get back to work after that first one? But, you know, having nine assists was great. Uh, couldn't have done it without my teammates. You know, we got a lot of talented scorers on the wings and in the post. So getting the ball to them and making them, putting them in the right positions to score is probably just what I'm trying to do best right now. Yeah, I think that's a great quality and probably one that the coaching staff loves to have in you is that you just want, you know, not only for yourself to do well, but the players around you to do well. And I think that just goes to, you know, show what basketball really is and, and that it's one of the best team sports out there. I mean, you can't win the game by yourself. It's, it's not one against five. It's five against five. And, you know, when you're on the floor, it's, you know, making the other players on the floor or on your side you know, make an impact. And I think, you know, it definitely showed in that first game. So credit to you, man. I think that's a great debut. Gotcha. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, of course. And then, you know, we'll circle back to uh, last night, another great win for you guys. I know maybe not the performance that you anticipated on having um, on your end, but, you know, just a quick turnaround for you guys. I think one thing that Coach Miller said in post-game press conferences, I think he actually said it last night as well, but it's tough to win games at this level. So just for you guys to walk away with the win, put up 93 points. I mean, that's extremely impressive, you know, to have that performance um, and maybe even not on your best night to win, you know, kind of move on and have that short term memory um, and just go on to the next game. Focus on Wagner now. You know, how do you take these these last two games, what you've done, what the team has done um, and move on to Tuesday night? Again, you got Wagner. It's a long season. It's a long non-conference schedule, long slate. You know, how do you take what you've done and just keep going with it? Uh, we just know we're not a finished product. You know, we got a lot to build on defensively, offensively, and just chemistry wise. Uh, we know we have a long path ahead of us. So we're going to stay humble, but we're going to stay hungry, too. So we're just going to continue to work day in and day out. Everybody's putting up shots, working, and everybody has that level of accountability. Like, you know, we got to get to the next one, win the next one, never look, overlook an opponent because we got a pretty big tournament coming up next week. Yeah, for sure. And I think just pushing each other to be better. You know, I think you got guys that are veterans that, you know, either they come in and, and play at different schools or they have had different coaches previously or they've played for this program before or you got guys who are newcomers like yourself. But just being able to push each other and like you said, wear the same thing on the front of your jersey and represent the same thing, but also have the same goal, which is to win. Um, I think that's that's great. And I think also recognizing that, you know, you're not a finished product. You know, you're two games in and there's a long you know season to go, a long slate to go. Because um, I think a lot of teams, especially in college basketball, they get a little too cocky, you're a little too confident. Um, and, you know, sometimes you see teams off to the hottest starts and then they start to slip by the middle of the season or conference play. But I think recognizing you can always kind of be better and having that chip on your shoulder that will get you guys there. And, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, again, looking forward to seeing uh, what this team is able to accomplish. I think out of the recent Rhode Island teams that we've seen, um, this team is definitely one of the more exciting ones just because of the talent that's out there on the floor. And I think that definitely speaks to, you know, Coach Miller and just his recruiting this offseason. So, um, and another thing is, you know, every player on this roster is now somebody that has been recruited by this coaching staff. So another thing that's really cool to see. Oh, yeah, and that helps a lot, you know, with the chemistries. Oh, where'd I go? There we go. You know how the Brookside dorms get. I know Brookside, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a great thing, you know, in terms of chemistry within the whole team. You know, we're still becoming a family. So having everybody have their recruits, you know, we take care of each other like a big family now. So it's just a great environment that we got in a great coach. Yeah, real quick, I want to ask about one of your teammates, uh, Jaden House. I mean, he has certainly been impressive. Did you expect this from him, you know, this immediate impact from him just going up against him in practice? Uh, You know, facing him all summer, you know, you kind of have something to – you kind of have a picture of what he's going to do whenever right. we get around the season. So he's just been a dog. He's been great. He's been a great leader in terms of just following his lead on the court. You know, we're going to get behind him sometimes and – you know, he has that scoring power and that ability to get to the rim that, you know, is unmatched from what I've seen so far. So Jaden just been great on and off the court. Yeah, it's cool to see, especially what he's done just in his first two games with the program. And, you know, I think, you know, as time goes on, you guys are each going to have, you know, individual performances like that. We talk about basketball being a team sport. And as you guys kind of develop a little bit more of that chemistry on and off the floor and, you know, just a little bit more of, you know, just building that sense of family your sense of community around the program or around the team 
Um, I think, you know, you guys will each have those individual performances, but you know, the main thing, like we continue to stress in this interview is the wins just keep coming in. Um, so I think that's, that's definitely cool to see. Um, I got actually one more question I just thought of. I know it's been, you know, a short time in Kingston so far, but do you have, you know, a favorite memory that stands out? You know, I know you're, you're kind of there during the summer. It's kind of the dog days, you know, campus is quiet. You're just kind of moving in, getting to know everybody, but do you have a, a memory or kind of a story, you know, kind of off the court that just stands out so far? Maybe something when you reflect on these first couple of days, you kind of want to go back to. I kind of say it's maybe just the whole vibe of the summertime, you know, getting to see everybody's worth ethic. Uh, we got a really hard working group, you know, from the first guy coming off the bench, the starter, to the last guy on the bench, you know, everybody's in the gym working. So those long days where we were in the gym, grinding, lifting, pushing each other, iron sh uh, sharpens iron. So I feel like the summer was just a great time and one of my favorite memories in basketball, without a doubt. Yeah, for sure. It sounds like I've talked to a lot of you guys over the years, and it just sounds like kind of having that individual time to work on yourself and also just to get to know each other, have those kind of bonding experiences, um, you know, and then obviously it starts to, you know, kind of reflect on the season that you have. And uh, it's pretty cool to see you just to kind of have those those experiences, you know, right when you move in and just kind of to kind of work, get right to work, you know, no stopping and, um, you know, just kind of, you know, waiting it out, just, you know, getting right to work and, you know, focusing on the, the task at hand, which is to win. But, um, you know, one more question for you. Obviously, again, a talented group, exciting to yeah. see or speaks to Coach Miller and his staff and just the recruiting that they've done. But, for you, you know, what is your goal this season? What is something that you want to leave out there for the roadie fans who are watching this interview at home? And, you know, what can they expect from you as you take the floor, you know, the rest of the season? Uh, personally, I want them to see me as a winner. You know, uh, personal accolades, points, you're always going to be remembered for winning. So making that push for an A-10 championship and getting into the March March Madness scene would be great and a great memory to have and to leave with roadie fans whenever I believe. Yeah. For sure. There it is right there. Ways, appreciate you taking the time again. Best of luck going forward. And of course, go roadie. Thank you again, man. Appreciate you a lot for having me on. Go roadie.